Welcome to The Truth About Taxes and Retirement. This podcast is brought to you by SavingYouTaxes.com and hosted by J. Barry Watts. As an advanced tax strategist and enrolled agent federally licensed by the IRS, Barry is uniquely qualified to go deeper into the Internal Revenue Code than most accountants. He understands and interprets its provisions explaining how they'll help you reduce income taxes you owe so you can direct that previously wasted tax money into tax-free accounts that you can enjoy in your retirement years. Now, on today's episode. Mountains can be majestic and imposing. They can be inspirational and uplifting, but they can also be dangerous. And as you will hear in this podcast episode, all that makes them a great allegory for retirement and that lifestyle for which you are planning. Welcome back to The Truth About Taxes and Retirement with J. Barry Watts and Eric Burleson of SavingYouTaxes.com. Retirement and Mountains, Barry. Why don't you set the stage for our expedition up the slopes and hopefully safely back down? Well, indeed, hopefully safely down the mountain, because uh, if you've ever climbed into a real high spot, like on the top of your house, and then had to uh, figure out how to get back down, that's really usually when the fear kicks in. That's natural, because that's where the danger really kicks in. So while retirement is a lot like climbing a mountain, uh, it's coming down the other side that can be most challenging. So let's just look at the allegory of using a mountain to think about retirement and talk about how this all fits together. So when you're young, you've just gotten a job, you're, you know, maybe a newlywed, just starting your family, all those kinds of things in your entry level kinds of positions, we would call you, you in the foothills of the retirement mountain. Now down in the foothills, it's almost level. It's easy going. The summit, you can see it out there, although I think when you're young looking toward retirement, you can't even see it because it feels like it's a a million years away and you don't realize it's really day after tomorrow. But it's easy going in the early days. And, And I need to tell you that that's the time to develop the discipline to put money away and to start putting money away. I was so proud of my own daughter who just reached out to me yesterday. She's about 18 months post college and into her career. The way we started her out, perhaps we'll do a whole podcast on this topic, but we started her out by saying, okay, your number one objective is to accumulate six months worth of emergency money in a fund. And yesterday she texted me and she said, hey, dad, by the time I get home for Christmas, uh, we're making this recording in November. uh, She said, by the time I get home for Christmas, I will have six months worth of living expenses in my savings account. So then we need to talk about what's next. So uh, obviously, as a dad, that made me feel proud. She'd accomplished what I probably hadn't accomplished by the time I was 35. She's in the the foothills, you know, just those beginning stages of uh, socking money away. And that money that she saved is going to be far more valuable to her than if she saved the same amount of money when she were 50 years old. And that's because of the time value of money. Uh, That money has got an extra 25 years to be compounding and accumulating. But you're in the foothills. And then over time, uh, the climb becomes just a little bit steeper. And hopefully you're really putting money away as the climb becomes a little steeper. And then eventually you kind of come face to face with the top of the mountain. You're sort of looking straight up. It's really steep. This is perhaps the last 15 years of your working life. And finally, finally, you arrive at the summit ready to retire. And if we had any uh, sound effects in the studio, we would have all the bells and whistles go off right now, because this is the exciting moment. You're ready to retire. You feel successful. And hopefully you have enough money to be able to retire and stay that way. But up until now, haven't you been keeping track of how much money you're putting aside? You you should know if you have enough. Uh, Oh, really? Well, how would you know if you had enough? If you're keeping track of it. Oh, well, okay. So I know I have a million and a half dollars. How do I know if that's enough? You tell me. (laughs) Ah, well, there's the whole point. You need certainty. (laughs) Of course, everybody knows how much they've got because they get a statement or a set of statements on their retirement accounts, but they don't know about what spending looks like on the backside of the mountain. You see, it's when you've accumulated and have an amount of money to retire, and if you reach the magical age, whatever that is, that the danger really sets in. That is, if I could, that is a good analogy because when you are going up a mountain, it's a totally different way. It, you're, it, all the things that you have to do, all the things you have to watch out for are a completely different set of tools and skills going up than going down. I can tell you 
physically going down a mountain for me is terrifying. It's terrifying. It's actually pretty easy to go up a mountain or climb up a hill if you know that when you get up there, you don't have to go back down, right? Because it's it. But for me, looking down and having to navigate going down a, down a hill is, in fact, when we went to our family visited Sedona, I, I had moments where we would be rock climbing or when we visited the Grand Canyon where I would physically lock up when looking down because of the, because, you know, when you're looking down and you're seeing what you have to navigate to, it becomes, par- it can become paralyzing. You almost feel like you're going to fall into that abyss Yes, mm-hmm. somehow. And it's harder on your feet and legs too, when you're headed down the mountain, Right, interestingly, because it, essentially you're extending your toes and your shins feel stretched out. Right. But in the uh, same way, I think this is a great analogy because in the same way, when you get to that point and you're retiring, you no longer have got money coming into the account. So the, the strategy and the way in which you retire is an entirely different process than what you've been doing all of those years. Precisely. And that's why retirement is so dangerous. The analogy is because coming down the mountain is so dangerous. Did you know that most mountain climbing fatalities don't happen when you're climbing the mountain? They happen when you're coming back down the mountain because that's when the danger of slipping and falling into the abyss is greatest. And by the way, I I don't know about you. I'm not much one for heights. I can climb a ladder just fine and get up on the roof of the house. Right. But when the time comes to leave the roof of the house and transition from the roof back onto the ladder, that is the scariest moment. It is. And I'm just petrified of that. Yeah, me too. Me and, too. And there's a good reason for that, by the way. I, I, I think you ought to be petrified because that's when the danger of breaking your back really happens. Mm-hmm. So let's, uh, let's move to a, a story about this idea of climbing the mountain. Kind of flesh it out by going to Mount Everest, if you don't mind. And let me just ask you, Eric, do you know who the first person to climb Mount Everest was? Oh, was it Hiller? Heller? Sir Edmund Hillary. Hillary. Sir Edmund Hillary. In 1921, however, there was a guy far ahead of Sir Edmund Hillary who tried to climb the mountain. He was also a British fellow. His name was George Mallory. And so while Hillary is the guy who is uh, credited with the first person to climb Mount Everest, George Mallory is believed to be the person who got to the top first. In the climb, the last time he was seen was about 800 feet from the top of the mountain. Now, uh, Hillary carried, or I'm sorry, Mallory rather, carried a photo of his wife that he was going to leave at the top of Mount Everest. And uh, he disappeared. Uh, Nobody saw him for years and years and years. I don't remember when his body was found. But when they finally found his body, his photo of his wife was no longer with him. And he had changed out of his climbing equipment. And he was wearing instead the equipment that climbers use to come down or to descend the mountain. So he made it. So it's believed, you know, they don't have a a picture of him standing up there with a flag, but it's believed that he was actually the first guy to climb to the top of Mount Everest, but he failed in coming back down. And the reason Hillary gets credit for reaching the summit is because he lived to tell the story. And that was over 30 years later in 1953. Now, the question would be, what made Hillary better at coming down the mountain than Mallory? Why did Hillary succeed and Mallory didn't? Any ideas? He planned. He planned. Well, that is true. He He did plan. Had help. He had help. That's a real big story. And and who helped him was a guy by the name of Tenzing Norgay. Now, Tenzing Norgay was a, a Nepalese person from Nepal. He was a Sherpa. And uh, originally, all Sherpas were from Nepal. And these are the people who help other people to ascend and descend the mountains. They are mountain climbing experts. And so the difference between George Mallory's failed expedition in which he died and Hillary's famous expedition can be reduced to one person, Tenzing Norgay, his Sherpa, because Norgay assisted Hillary in coming down the mountain and he made sure that he got back to the bottom. Now, here's what this has to do with retiring. If you reach the summit of Mount Retirement and then you slip and fall coming down the backside of the mountain, let me just ask this question. Who's going to catch you? Who's going to keep you from falling down the mountain? Uh, You've never climbed down a mountain before, so do you know how to navigate the downhill side? 
Do you know how to make decisions that will affect your taxes or how the decisions you make will affect your social security? How will the decisions you make affect your Medicare premiums, the cost of prescription drugs? You see, in mountain climbing, it's a question of whether or not you are physically able. And when you're climbing mountain retirement, it's a question of whether or not you have time to correct any mistakes that you might make because time is against you. Obviously, you don't have time to turn around and go back to work. And at some point in your retirement, health may come against you. And so these are the things that make retiring kind of treacherous. And in the midst of that, I am constantly stunned at the things that people don't know. I'm not really surprised that people don't know these things, but I'm amazed at how critical they are. And people just cavalierly walk off into the downside of the retirement mountain with no realization for the danger points, the loose rock under their feet, and the things that could cause the mountain to give away and literally send them to the bottom under a pile of rock and boulders. Right. Because at that point, when you've accumulated that much, any mistakes that you make they don't have just a little impact. They have got a significant impact, especially when you consider the impact that it might have 10, 20 years into your retirement. Oh, it's, it's, it's pr- profoundly huge. So when we think about people not realizing what the danger is and not knowing what they don't know, here, uh, here's a story that comes to mind. I recently had a person engage us through the podcast. He had about $8 million and he believed that he was set for life. This particular person wanted $240,000 a year to live on, and the majority of his finances were sitting in cash because he was scared of the markets, and I certainly understand that. So we did an analysis for him, and the analysis showed that he was going to run out of money somewhere in his mid-80s, and he just said, well, that's impossible. I have $8 million. I couldn't run out of money. Well, When you consider inflation, when you consider taxes, when you consider $240,000 a year to spend, and you just begin doing the math on that, you can pretty rapidly eat up $8 million. And yet this guy thought he was set for life. You see, he didn't know what he didn't know. And coming down Mount Retirement was actually going to be very dangerous for him. So Eric, here's a question for you. How often when you do something for the first time, do you do it well? I'm kind of clumsy and uh, accident prone. and Well, Angie had mentioned that, but I didn't yes. know that, that you <laughs> knew. So No, I have to practice at things. I have to, I have to do it often. There's a reason well. that they call them beginners. So when a person retires, are they an expert or are they a beginner at retiring? Yeah, you only get to do it really once. That's right. And if you've never done it before, how uh, we've already established that, that you probably don't have the skill set to do it right the first time because you haven't ever retired before. And so we bring all of these ideas together and here's what it really means. In our practice, we want to be our client's retirement Sherpa. We want to be their Tenzing Norgay. We want to help them not fall off the top of the mountain, not fall and slide into the abyss or the crevasse, Uh, as they're descending throughout their retirement, we view ourselves as their hired servants to keep them glued to the side of the mountain. And so if you'll think about it, it's a comforting thing to have a Sherpa with you, whether you're touring Washington, D.C. (laughs) or a, a foreign city. We love when we go to foreign countries and can hire a local to just take us around and show us the thing that all the locals do here. Take us to the place you'd take your family to eat. Yeah. Uh, and that's what a Sherpa does. Yeah. Protect us from getting our, our get, getting pickpocketed, right? <laughs> Keep us in the safe areas. Exactly. Exactly. Where's the line? How do I know where to be safe? The only way you can know that is to take somebody who knows the lay of the land. Exactly. And it's, it's just remarkable what a difference that makes in your tour. So when you're taking the retirement tour and coming down the mountain, it's helpful to have somebody with you who knows the lay of the land and who has retired uh, themselves before or retired literally uh, hundreds of clients uh, across their career. And that's what we do. Now, one of the first things that we teach people that's really important about coming down that mountain is that there are two different ways to approach retirement. Do you know what those are, Eric? Well, there's I know what some people think of. They think of the traditional way, which is just accumulate and then spend. Yeah, that's exactly right. We call that the two-phase approach. And then there's a three-phase approach. So what I want you to do 
is I want you to go to that great drawing board in your imagination. Can you see the chalkboard or the whiteboard in your imagination? And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to look at the two-phase method of retirement planning. So what I want you to do in your mind is I want you to draw a mountain. This is really going to be a triangle without the bottom line. And on the left-hand side, I want you to draw an arrow that goes up toward the top of the mountain. So you've just got a line with an arrow on it toward the top of the mountain. And on that line, I want you to write the words accumulate. Now, on the right-hand side, I want you to draw an arrow or a line from the top of the mountain to the bottom of the mountain so that when you get done, this is going to look like a triangle without that bottom line. And on the right-hand side, I want you to write the word decumulate. That's just a fancy word for spending, but I think it's a really cool word because I don't ever hear anybody talk about decumulating. So on one side, we've got accumulating, and on the other side, we've got decumulating or spending. And that's how most people approach retirement. They save, save, save for a working lifetime, and then they reach the summit, and they get a gold watch, and then they spend, spend, spend all the way down. And here's where the problem can set in. What if something happens to your nest egg after you're at the top of the mountain and you've got the golden watch? What happens if the stock market runs backwards by 30 or 40%? And instead of having a million dollars, what if you've only got $600,000 to retire? Because the market ran backwards by 40%. What if one of your children or grandchildren faces an extensive and expensive health crisis and you need to write some checks to fix that problem? Or what if you need long-term care yourself? Here's effectively what that means. It means that the backside of the mountain, the right side of the mountain, the downhill side of the mountain has had a landslide. And so instead of having that million dollars to retire, you've got uh, $600,000 to retire. That's a 40% reduction. And we have seen that happen in the lives of people over and over and over again. All it takes is one move of the stock market to suck that money away without any of those medical conditions. Imagine if a bad stock market move were coupled with those medical kinds of events we're talking about. Oh my goodness. Do you know what it causes you to say? Will you, will you have fries with that? Yeah. Would you like fries with that? <laughs> yeah. Because you find yourself in retirement suddenly having to go back to work because the money just wasn't there like it was the day you got the golden watch. So as your retirement Sherpa, we want to protect you from a problem on the backside of Mount Retirement, from falling as you come down the hill. Now, let me show you how we do that. We're going to draw another picture of the mountain. But instead of being the two-phased retirement system, which is accumulate and decumulate, we're going to draw a three-phased retirement approach, okay? So we're going to draw the exact same two lines in our minds that we drew before. The arrow pointed upward from the left marked accumulate and the one pointing downward on the right-hand side mark decumulate. But the only difference is this time, I want you to leave some space between these two arrows at the top of the triangle. So now what you're really going to have is a triangle, but the top of the triangle is going to have a flat spot right up on the top. So there's three arrows in here. There's the arrow going up, the arrow going across, and then the arrow going down. And on that third line up at the top, I want you, instead of writing accumulate or decumulate, I want you to write the word protect. So the three phases of retirement are accumulate, protect, and then spend or decumulate. And if you don't have a protection phase, then I'm just going to tell you, you don't have the right plan in place for retirement. Now, what kinds of things do you think we might need to protect from? Well, I can tell you one thing. As an example, this is reminding me of a story about a friend of mine that that experienced the 2008 downfall in the economy right at the time when she was in, needing to enter long-term care. Her husband had passed away, and I'll never forget this. She was a friend that I knew from, from other groups and civic um, clubs, and she had reached out to me because she needed help. She was going to have to move back home with her family and it, it was going to enter a long-term care facility closer to her children. But she was doing so really at a horrible time because her portfolio had dropped more than ha had, had been reduced by 40, 50%. So now she's having to increase her expenses and she's having to and do so in a time in which she has half the money to do it. So every dollar she was pulling out of her portfolio was almost like pulling out $2 because her portfolio had been cut in half. 
Exactly. And if she had 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 been in a situation where she was protected from the costs of long term care, she, she would have she wouldn't have had to experience that that horrible situation of having been forced to pull money out at that at that clip. Yeah. When, when you're taking money out of your retirement account to live on and that's what retirees do. And then the market goes down precipitously. The percentage of the money that you're taking out each month grows, increases exponentially. And suddenly, instead of taking out three or four percent over a year's time, you may be taking out eight or ten percent. Right. Because just because the market went down doesn't mean your lifestyle went down. It just means that the value of your account went down. And so you're actually accelerating the spending down and the ultimate destruction of your account. And so that is that individual right there was a perfect example to, uh, to me of two potential risks that people face. One is a medical expense or long-term care expenses that happen to many, many retirees. And the other is, is a market risk. Well, and those are at least two that I can think of that are really significant dangers on the backside of the mountain. Then there's uh, also the notion of higher taxes. If taxes go higher in retirement, as we believe that they're going to, and indeed, uh, we're right in the middle of a presidential campaign right now, and it's just right out there. We're going to raise taxes. This is not some wild notion that Barry has. This is a mainstream idea that is, I'll tell you, it's likely to happen no matter who gets elected ultimately, because the United States government doesn't have any other way to pay its bills except printing money. And that would be destructive to us in a phenomenal way. I think we've talked about that on the podcast in the past. So I think taxes are going to go higher. And that's one of the places where coming down the retirement mountain, you can hit some loose gravel. And if you don't watch it, boom, your feet go out from under you and off of the wild edge you go. And so at our company, one of the things that we have here at savingyoutaxes.com is we have a proprietary process that is called the Retirement Tax Roadmap. And it's where we help you as you approach the summit of Mount Retirement. We help you map out your journey, plan how you're going to come down the mountain, which path is the best one to take. Map out your journey through decumulation, spending, taxes, health care, and legacy. And ultimately, what we're going to do is some math that figures out, do you have enough money to really make it down the mountain? Or when you're too old to work any longer and you just need more intensive kinds of physical care, perhaps, are you going to face a retirement money shortfall and not have enough money to do the things that you need to do? And so in that process with the retirement tax roadmap, we're asking this question, well, what could you do to reduce your taxes? How can you stretch your money out and protect it, as you said, from long-term care events all the while reducing the hidden costs that you probably don't even know that you're paying inside your retirement account. And so in the end, we come up with a set of recommendations for your consideration and approval that will cure any of the deficits that we found and that will give you the highest probability of coming down the backside of mountain retirement safely with excess money for you and your spouse if you're married and ultimately even with a legacy to leave to your heirs or the causes that are important to you. And so that's what it's like to go through the process of the retirement tax roadmap. And that's one of the things that we do to help our clients descend Mount Retirement. A great financial trek from retirement Sherpas Barry Watts and Eric Burleson of SavingYouTaxes.com. To subscribe to Barry and Eric's Truth About Taxes and Retirement podcast, take advantage of the subscribe button on this page. There's also a share button to help you share with people who could benefit from their observations. Thank you for listening to The Truth About Taxes and Retirement Podcast. Click the subscribe button below to be notified when new episodes become available. The information covered and posted represents the views and opinions of the guests and does not necessarily represent the views or opinions of SavingYouTaxes.com. The content has been made available for informational and educational purposes only and is not intended to be a substitute for professional tax and investment advice. Always seek the advice of your own qualified advisor with any questions you may have regarding taxes and investing.